Hello. So, yesterday, uh, Minnie and I, this is Minnie by the way, say hello. Hello. <laughs> Went for a walk. And when we were on our walk, we found lots of elderflowers. So, I thought I'd come home and make some elderflower cordial. And um, it was very good. So, I, we're going out on another walk today up to Old Winchester Hill. So, if I see any, I'm going to do some recording and show you how I made it. Okay, so it's bye-bye from us for the moment. So bye-bye, Minnie. Bye-bye. Hello, we're up on Winchester Hill today. And while I was here, um, I think there's lots of elderflowers. If I turn round, so I face the sunshine, you can see on that tree there, there's lots of elderflower, so I thought I'd go through how we make elderflower cordial. It's really easy. I've got some on the go at the moment, but I thought I would show you how I made it. Right, so here are the elderflowers. I need about 15 to 20 heads of elderflower. Uh, you know it's elderflower because you can really smell it, and there's lots of it. So wherever you take it from, you need to make sure that there's plenty left to be able to support the insects and the animals that require it to live as well. So I'm going to take some from here and then I'll take some from elsewhere. I've got my trusty foraging bag with me so I shall fill that up and show you what we do later. I thought I'd do a quick video of the leaves of the elder plant. So you can see there's some plants that look quite similar with the flowers to the elder. Um, the elder has a very distinct smell to the flowers and the leaves look like this whereas a lot of the other species that are similar tend to have larger leaves and the flowers tend to grow nearer to the ground whereas the elder is actually a tree so you would expect the flowers to be growing higher up. In any case whenever you're foraging you should always make sure that you're with an adult um, and also that you've got an identification book. I use my iSeq, my app on my phone. Um, I've also got identification books. I've been picking elderflowers for a long time, so I'm fairly confident that I know what I'm picking. But if in any doubt, you always need to double check with at least two sources of identification to make sure you've got the right thing. Okay, so to make it, I have 400 grams of sugar. I have the juice and rind of one lemon and another lemon sliced up. And in the saucepan ready to heat up, there is a litre of water. Now on some of the recipes, like the Jamie Oliver one, they want you to use 500 grams of sugar plus four tablespoons, I think, of honey. Personally, I find that too sweet. I kind of like the sharpness of the lemon. So this is a bit of an experiment for me. And this time I'm using slightly less sugar and no honey. And hopefully it will taste just as good. Okay, so you need to bring the water up to the boil, adding in the sugar. And when the sugar's dissolved, then you can add in the other ingredients. You can see that all the sugar's now dissolved. So I'm going to add in my other ingredients. There goes the lemon juice and the sliced lemon and the lemon rind that's all in there and I've got to put in the elderflowers themselves okay so the elderflowers have been totally washed all the leaves removed and any bugs that were on them when you put them in the pan they need to go face down at this point the saucepan comes off the heat so put them all in make sure they're all face down you want the flowers in the water like that and then we're going to return the lid to the saucepan and leave them for 24 hours um, before straining the liquid off Um, I was also on a foraging um, seminar last week sometime um, and they were talking about having elderflower and nettle tea. So while I was out, I collected some nettles as well. I don't have um, an infuser cup, unfortunately. Um, I 
think I'm going to give that a go and see what it tastes like and I'll report back. It may be amazing, but I've tried nettle soup before and quite frankly it was gross. So we'll see. Okay, I am going to do this um, verdict on the tea. Uh, you can see in there, I've left it a little while. It's cooled off a little bit. Not going to lie, it smells a little bit like sweaty socks. But the woman who ran the seminar the other day assures me that this is lovely. It's very good for you. Nettle is one of the best things you can have, apparently. Um, so I'm going to be brave and I'm going to give it a go. Um, it's okay, I suppose. It tastes like, I don't know, hot plants. <laughs> it's not something I'm going to rush back to do again, but hey, I've tried it. So in true Blue Peter style, here's one I made earlier. This is yesterday's. It's been infusing now for 24 hours and I need to strain it. So I don't have a muslin, so I use a tea towel and I'm going to strain it into my kilner jar. Um, yeah, so I just need to remove all the bits of lemon and the flowers and the seed heads from the elderflower. So there we go. So there we go. There's my first batch of elderflower cordial. And I still have um, some left in there. As you can see, I strained out and squeezed everything I could out of the elderflowers um, before I put them on there out of the way. And looking forward to giving that a go, probably with some fizzy water. Well, I've come outside to enjoy mine. It's all done, mixed with some fizzy water. And it's delicious. Cheers. Mm.